Hey everyone, I'm going to show you five simple effects you can use for a no scope and a montage. So these are super easy, simple ones. You can kind of add to it from here, but none of these use plugins, so all plug-in free and they're all, like I said, simple. Number one is the typical RGB color split. I originally saw a version of this on Baker's Tuts back in the day, where a lot of you probably got effects from there back in the day too. But let's walk through it. So we have our clip here. We're going to apply the effect set channels. Now we're going to duplicate that clip twice so that we have three versions of it. In our top clip, we're going to go into the effects under set channels and you're going to see that it has a red, green, and blue. What you're going to want to do is make this top one just red. So in order to do that, we have to turn off the green and the blue. And you'll see it turns red. Now the clip underneath will go into that effect and we're going to leave it just green. So we want to turn off the red and the blue. In the bottom clip, we're going to kind of do the opposite where we're going to turn off the red and the green, leaving it blue. Now we're going to highlight the top two clips we're going to change the blending mode to screen. So it should look back to normal now. Now still selecting the top two clips, we're going to click S on our keyboard, which brings up our scale. And we're going to add a keyframe one frame before the no scope starts so that there is a keyframe on both of those clips at 100%. And this is one frame again before it snipes. Now move one frame over to where the snipe begins and play with the scaling a bit. We're going to have the red one scale up a little larger than the bottom one or sorry, then the green one. But play with what you like and then make sure you go several frames over or half a second over and scale them both back to 100. So it goes on and off, kind of scales up, scales down. Add a new adjustment layer. We're gonna look up the effect radio blur. Once we place that on the adjustment layer, we're gonna change the type to zoom and we're gonna add a few keyframes. So again, a frame before the no scope starts, we're gonna have the blur amount at zero. So add a keyframe there. Move one frame over where the no scope begins and turn up the blur a bit to your liking. It can kind of be whatever you want. And then again, have it fade back down to zero several frames or half a second later. Now we're gonna add a new adjustment layer. We're gonna find the effect transform, place it on the adjustment layer. We're gonna add a keyframe to the scale in the transform effect. Again, one frame before the no scope. So there's a keyframe at 100%. Make sure this is in the transform effect and not the actual scale of the adjustment layer. Now move one frame over to again where the no scope begins and scale it up say 5%. And again, fade that back to 100%. So go half a second later or so and put a keyframe back to 100% so it scales up and down. Highlight the last two keyframes, so the one that scaled up and the one that scaled back down to 100%. Right click and change them to easy ease, so it kind of fade them in and out. You can leave the first one without the easy ease. Now we're gonna go into effects, look for preset, and we're gonna grab wiggle position and wiggle rotation. And you're gonna slap that on the same adjustment layer as your transform. We're gonna add keyframes, again, one frame before the no scope. This is gonna be a common occurrence, but one frame before the no scope, and we're gonna change both the amount and the speed to zero for both presets. So that's for the speed and for the wiggle, or for the speed and for the position will both be at zero. Now again, move one frame over to where the no scope begins. And for wiggle position, we're gonna change the speed to one and the amount to 15. For wiggle rotation, we're gonna change the speed to one and the amount to two. Now only move a few frames over, so not as far as you did for the other fade outs, and change all four of those keyframes back to a value of zero. This will give us a kind of a slight camera shake. You can really tweak it how much more you want it, but again, this is just an example. And we're gonna remember this adjustment layer because we're actually gonna use this camera shake adjustment layer on all the examples I'm gonna to list today. This is the only one that I'm gonna explain how to do it, but you'll just copy this adjustment layer and we're gonna use it on the other ones. So that's the first one here, just an RGB kind of split shake. Nothing too fancy, but it gives you the idea and the tools to uh, tweak it on your own if you really want to. Number two here is using the effect light burst. So what we're gonna do is go into effect CC light burst 2.5. We're gonna slap that on our clip and we're gonna play with the ray length until we're happy. So I like it around 50 or 30. I think I play with it here, but what, what you like anyways. And you're gonna add a keyframe of the length you like on the no scope. And then again, go one frame before, turn the zip value to zero so there is no length. And then it kind of turns on during the no scope. And again, go several frames later, half a second or so, and change the value back to zero. So you have it turn on and off during the no scope. Now we're gonna copy that adjustment layer, the shake adjustment layer from the clip before or from the effect before, and we're gonna place that in this one here so you have your shake. And there's actually one more thing I'm gonna do. We're gonna go add new solid, and we're gonna make it a white solid. We'll place it at the bottom of our composition here, and we're gonna play with the opacity of our clip. So basically one frame before the no scope, keep the opacity at zero. Press T to bring up opacity, add a keyframe there so it's at 
sorry, at 100 is what I mean to say. So the opacity is at 100 there. Go one frame over where your no scope begins and play with the opacity. I like something subtle, even 95 to 85%, it's up to you. But find one you like and then fade it back up to 100%. And there is a light burst effect, super simple, but it gets the job done if you wanna go for a cleaner style. Effect number three here is using the bulge effect. So there's a few different ways to do this, but uh, I'll show you one of the methods here. We're gonna grab the effect bulge. Yes, bulge, that's the effect. We're gonna place it on our clip here and I'm gonna stretch it out to a shape somewhat like this. You can play with it. This is the shape I like. And one frame before the no scope begins, we're gonna set a keyframe for the bulge height to zero. So we have one frame before the no scope, bulge height set at zero move one frame over where the no scope begins and add a value you're happy with. I usually like slightly under one, so maybe 0.8 or something like that. Again, it's up to you to tweak it how you want. Move several frames over half a second, change it back to zero. So you have it bulge in and out. Like the effect before, we're gonna add a new white solid and we're gonna add that underneath our clip and we're gonna play with the opacity of our clip. So a keyframe before the no scope, 100% opacity, during the no scope, play with it between 95, 85, whatever you like, and then have it fade back up to 100%. So there's a, a slight flash with the bulge. Uh, usually you don't want it too much, but it kind of helps to it. Now we're gonna look up the effect radial blur again. And this time we're gonna keep the type as spin on our clip here. We're gonna add a keyframe of zero before the no scope. During the no scope, we're gonna have a very small value because this kind of spin look of the radial blur it's really too strong, unlike the zoom one earlier, you can play with it more. So I'm just gonna use a value of three here in this example, and again, have it fade back to zero. And one more time, we're gonna copy the shake adjustment layer from the first two clips and place that on top, and this is our bulge effect. So nothing fancy, and this one I find only really works with no scopes, because the scope warping doesn't look as good, but you can play with it, and it's kind of a nice little effect. I find having it more subtle makes it look better but that's the bulge effect here. The fourth one is using a mask or like kind of this mask circle effect. So what we're gonna do is control D to duplicate the clip. So we have two copies, add the effect exposure on the top clip and just turn it up slightly so it's brighter than the bottom clip. And now what we're gonna do is create a circular mask at the center or where your reticle is on the screen of the top clip here. What you do is hold control alt shift when you have your circular or eclipse mask tool, click in the center and drag it out to make it a a perfect circle. The size of it doesn't actually matter right now because we're gonna adjust the mask extension. And now we're gonna trim this top clip so it's only visible during the no scope. So it isn't on before, so we don't even see it. Now bring up your mask tools and go down to mask expansion and make your mask expansion pretty small at the beginning of this clip, right at the beginning of the no scope. We're gonna add a keyframe for that, move several frames over and expand it a lot. So we're gonna turn up the mask expansion so it looks like it this circle kind of blew up during the no scope there. After that, we're gonna go several more frames and we're gonna have it fully expand to cover the whole screen. So you want it to fast expand and then kind of slow expand after that. The effect should kind of look like this. On the last keyframe, you can right click it and change it to easy ease out. Press T to bring up the opacity of the top clip and we're actually gonna have it fade out during the second expansion. So we're gonna have it go from 100% opacity to zero. So you just kind of see the circle expand and then it fades out as it gets bigger. Now on the bottom clip, we're gonna add the effect radial blur. We're gonna add a keyframe so that there is no radial blur before the no scope. And as the no scope starts that one frame on, we're gonna have a little bit of a blur and have it fade out as well. Now again, we're gonna copy and paste that shake adjustment layer we made before and the other effects and place it on top of this composition. Looking back on this effect, cause I'm recording this voice over later, I think I overdid the exposure. I like it when it's more subtle. So I would turn the exposure down so it's less of an effect or less of like this glow and the mask doesn't seem as uh, powerful and strong as it is. But this gives you an idea what you can do with that. This last one here is playing with the cartoon effect. So what we're gonna do is duplicate the clip, turn off the top clip for now, and we're gonna go down to the bottom clip, go to our effects, grab glow. We're gonna change the glow radius to 90 and the glow intensity to 0.8. Now go into effects, um, grab the effect cartoon, again, place it on the bottom clip. We're gonna change the detail radius to 13, the edge width to one, and the edge opacity to 60%. Now we're gonna go into effects, radial blur. We're gonna change the amount to five and the type to zoom. That's pretty fast, but re <laughs> replay it if you need it. Make the top clip visible again. We're gonna change its opacity, so press T to bring up opacity. Add a keyframe of 100% before the no scope. During the no scope, we're gonna change it down to 0% and we're gonna have it fade back up to 100%. So 
several frames later, half a second later, you can uh, <laughs> decide on that. And once again, we're gonna copy the shake adjustment layer we made on our first effect and place it on the top, just so they all kind of have this nice shake to it. These are all very simple effects and none of them require any plugins. Really pick and choose when you use effects like this. They should only be on high impact moments, like a big part of the song, things like that. You never want to overdo the effects, but these are five simple no scope effects that you can use as a starting ground to, for your own effects or just use them as they are. So have a good one guys.